right, guys. Good old boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting here on the review table, and in front of me is the first part of this video. We're going to be taking an in-depth look at this guy right here. This is the billet upper receiver set from the guys over there at Bear Creek Arsenal. Let's just talk about some of the details, and we're going to tear it down. And I'll be honest with you, they don't give you a whole lot of details on their website. Basically, I'm going to read verbatim what it says. This BCA AR-15 Complete Upper has a 16-inch barrel with an M4 contour profile made of 4150 chrome vanadium with a parkerized finish and features a 1 in 8 twist rate, a carbine length gas system. The upper includes a 15-inch with a 1 quarter inch M-lock rails, a billet upper receiver, a BCA bolt carrier group. There we go. Charging handle, this little twisted looking uh, flash, a rear charging handle, and it's chambered in 223 Wild and machined with M4 feed ramps. They're in there, trust me. Okay, uh, that's it. What's the big difference between this and a regular old, oh, I don't know, uh, forge? upper receiver well i just happen to have one right here and you can see the differences basically what it is cnc cut machine now i'm going to show you some detailed photos here as a matter of fact i think i can probably bring it up close and you can see uh there are some machine cuts in shown in here you can see some lines right there there's some stuff right here where your machining goes through but ultimately at the end of the day when you get a billet upper receiver like this uh, let me see if I can show you like this. Okay, that is a thicker sidewalls. Those are the advantages over a mill spec. You can see that right there. Hopefully you can. Um, the internals, you're looking pretty good inside. We can see there. Am I impressed with it? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I mean, this guy right now, I wish they'd give you some more uh, information on it, but it's uh, on sale right now, and it is in stock for $389.99. What we're gonna do, I don't have my uh, test long scope with me because I'm getting a brand new one, it's pretty cool. But what we wanna do is I'm gonna take the handguard out. Before we do that, I wanna show you something. Now, this is a uh, kinetic development. You guys have seen this before if you watch the channel. And this is a QD kind of a deal for your M-Lock. Now, this is a UTG handguard. We're going to be doing a review. This is part of the, what, what is that thing that I'm doing as of late? It's called the uh, Pandemic Build. But I want to show you something. All you got to do to add a uh, pick rail is go ahead and put that on there like that. And it will fit back here. And I use this to test the M-Lock slots because a lot of times I've had companies, they send stuff out and the M-Locks, uh, these things are not quite to spec. But as you can see, this guy snaps in all the way around. It is very tight. I really like this handguard. We'll go over some details on that later on. I'm going to show you something on this guy, though. I have tried, and you, I cannot for the life of me get those things to go into that... Uh, those M-Lock spaces right there. Now that's not to say that something else won't fit in there. I just can't get this guy to go in. And I mean, it's they're all over the place. And you, hold on, well, nope. I thought we were gonna get it in there. Buyer beware on that particular section right there. You got some QD mounts right here and here, here and here, but you got M-Locks all the way across. I am going to try putting a different M-Lock attachment on here at some point in time. Now, the barrel is the exact same barrel that I have on this guy right here. Uh, I, For some reason, and it's one of the reasons why I ordered four of those barrels right there when before I was uh, the guys actually sent this out for me to take a look at. These are YFS screws. I always check these things for uh, tension. I've actually done these right here, but these guys right here, that's all it took to loosen them up. So when you get something, and I don't care who, who the manufacturer is, always check these screws. Matter of fact, I bet I want to do these with my hand. And not that Bear Creek Arsenal makes bad stuff, it's just that they are pushing these things out as fast as they possibly can. So always check these things and put a little blue Loctite on there. That'll save you a lot of trouble when you're trying to find these things later on down the road. Uh, but again, you know, we're talking about 
manufacturers, shit, being, just being able to get stuff these days. When I saw that they had those barrels right there in one and eight twists, which is the, my twist rate, that's the one I like, uh, and chambered in 223 Wild, I jumped all over those. And I think I paid less than $99 or something for that. Let's go ahead and pull this off. I want to look at that barrel nut. Now, one of the pre impressive parts, I'll talk, tell you right now, is that's a sizable barrel nut. That is a lot bigger than what comes on that UTG, and we'll talk about that later on down the road. My biggest thing is flex. You take a look at that handguard. That's not a bad looking handguard at all. Oh yeah, check that out. And then, then the barrel is just an M4 profile, 223 wild, one and eight twist. And again, they're identical as that. Uh, no, I don't really care about the uh, flash hider. I do know that when you have an exposed under portion of this, you go down to the prone position, you're going to be kicking stuff all over the place. Uh, just a regular old dust cover, but you can see the Ford Assist. That thing's really cool looking. I mean, as far as looks go, this thing's really, really neat. Now, we are going to be mating it up to the M4E1. So just to let you guys know, that it is a really, really nice match. You can see what that thing looks like all the way around. But I'm going to tell you something. That's a really good looking uh, upper receiver. I like the way that looks. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind having a couple. You can see some of the machine, machining cuts in it right there. Uh, but yeah, man. Overall, not bad looking. Now, let's take a look at what we have here. Um, We'll wait a thing when we get done with it. It does come with just a mil spec. Uh, what do you call these things? Charge and handle. Get rid of these screws. I did not bring any blue Loctite. I may have some somewhere. Get my knife off. Yep, that's actually a firing pin retaining pin. Not bad deal there. Let's go ahead and take a look at our firing pin. Uh, it is not chrome. It is oiled up. I would imagine they probably have test fired it, and I can tell you they have. You can see some of the uh, brass in that... Uh, uh, bolt right there that's not bad I am going to get some towel and lay it down because I don't want to get oil all over my carpet hold on it doesn't say anything about the materials that the uh, this thing is made out of boat carrier or the carry or the bolt itself and then one of the guys on the last video said we just like for you to walk out to the shop and start putting stuff together and I'm gonna take you up on that cam pin camming Yep, got a nice little carbon buildup. They may have put more than one round through it, it appears. All right, so this thing is MPI, uh, obviously MPI tested, and that's a good thing. And we do have a crane ring in there, that there's a little donut. In any case, uh, the rings look good. Everything looks good. I'm not going to throw pins and everything down there. We don't have time for that. The uh, locking lugs look pretty good. Let's test out the, uh, yep, ejection pin and spring look good anyway so we're looking at the carrier right here now here's where you're going to see where they make their money uh the machine cuts right here and here and here and here does that mean this thing's not going to run no not at all it means it could run just as good as anything else now these uh what do you call this thing the gas key these uh, screws are YFS. YFS are a little bit lesser grade than the grade 8. Uh, is that going to cause a problem? Not unless you're over here probably smoking this thing down like you're engaging about a half battalion of the uh, Taliban. All right, so what else here? You got your guide rails here and here, here and here. Uh, not exactly sure. This is probably magnet phosphate covered. It is not chrome lined, as you can see, if I had my light was half what it was. So, all right, so... Uh, the staking is adequate, nothing there. But as far as bolts go, uh, carrier, I could give a crap about. This is where your money's made right here. And uh, this thing actually looked pretty decent. So we're going to go ahead and put that back in there. Stand it on in. It holds up. Good to go. Okay, so what do we have? Let's go ahead and put this in here. And then we will weigh it. And then we'll take it out to the range and see how it shoots. So this complete upper weighs in at four pounds, 8.5 ounces. Well, that's it for the tabletop portion of this guy. Uh, it's a good looking thing. 
Uh, you can definitely tell it is billet, and it looks good right here with a nice brass deflector uh, all the way around. It fits nice and tight to this M4E1 lower. There we go. And we're going to mount this guy right here. This is the 4 to 16 uh, with the uh, mill dot reticle in it, the primary arms GLX. And this is the one that I will use to uh, check for accuracy on most of all my uh, review rifles. Not a bad looking little specimen. All right, let's get out on the range and see how it looks. Run a little hyper fire action in there. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're sitting out here at the range. I got the uh, upper from the guys over there at Bear Creek Arsenal. And uh, one of the things we want to do is go ahead and bring this scope in to zero. I'm going to use it, uh, these 55 grain. These are federal, nothing special. I've got a one inch target down there. And we're going to, first of all, we're going to do a functions test. One, I just want to see if it will cycle. I'm going to look at the casing to make sure that it's adequate. Now, here's a cool thing. So today I'm using this guy right here. <laughs> this is the Tacticam. Uh, are you recording? Yeah, this is the Tacticam LR. Share your hunt, okay? Uh, and it's sitting on top of the uh, sight mark, the latitude, 15 to 45, which is a pretty cool little deal. Uh, and I want to start using this to kind of share with you, see if we can do the bullet traces when we shoot long. Uh, the cool thing is there is no reticle in this particular spotting scope because I'm basically using it as a lens for the camera. And uh, these were all sent out to the cameras, uh, the, to the channel, as well as the Kopf Jager tripod. Now I've got the claw thing and it is in uh, my, tr my car, truck, whatever you want to call that thing these days. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see if we're relatively on target. I did take the liberty of bore sighting this thing last night <laughs> on a traffic light. I know, right? That's really bad. So let's see if we got to bring her up a little bit or back. There we go. Maybe we can get on paper. Now that Tacticam is recording on 4K. There we go, 20 round mag. Let's see if we get on paper, here we go. And I hope we don't have to mess with the scope too much. And this is the mill dot. I'll do a review on this guy. It'll be fun showing you guys how to do this whole thing through the uh, scope, here we go. And she is way. All right, so we got a lot of elevation that we got to work into. Give me a few seconds, we'll figure this thing out. Stand by. She was shooting about two feet high, maybe even more. I think we brought it up to the point of impact, and let's see how she rolls now. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're almost there. We're going to have her zeroed here in a second. Well, I thought. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're good. We're getting there there. Here. Okay, so that's the first round out of this thing. Good thing is, uh, the ejection pattern is perfect. It's right there. Uh, I would say about three or four feet on average. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting about two to three inches. I think that we get some more rounds put through here. I got a couple more of the, uh, the 55 grain that I'm going to go ahead and run through it just so I can build up some copper in the barrel. So what we'll do, 
I'm pretty satisfied with where it's hitting. It's close enough to go ahead and establish how it would group. But if you remember, when we took the BCA barrel, when we did the cheap versus expensive build, put the 77 grain in it, that thing shot one MOA. It was perfect. Let's go ahead and do this. I checked out the brass. Everything appears to be doing fine there. Uh, I just want to put some rounds to it. Uh -oh. First malfunction of the day. Uh -oh. Does not like that mag. Let's try this one. Oops. All right, so. Yeah. It was running fine just right there. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to run a 62 grain through it and see if that will work fine. And here we go. Nope. We got ourselves a little gas problem. Okay, even though we got a gas problem, I'm not worried about that. I can fix that. What I want to do, we're going to take a couple dots. We're going to chest out uh, 55 grain, uh, 77 grain, and 62 grain. See what kind of groups we can get together and go from there. Stand by. So what we've got are uh, three one-inch targets down at 100 yards. I'm going to go ahead uh, and run some... Uh, 66, I mean 62, 77 grain, 55 grain, and I have uh, a couple of these, uh, actually, yeah, these are uh, 55 grain extreme, I one of these. Uh, these are some of my everyday loads. We'll go ahead and run a five round uh, group. I want to see what these do first because I kind of know what the Federal 55 grain are doing, so we're going to shoot these at the top. And just to let you know, it's 25.2 grains of uh, CFE 223. And uh, we'll just see how these things are grouping. All right, top target. Ah, you know what? I'm gonna open this thing up. After we get done with this, I'm gonna open it up and take a look at it, what's going on. Oh, we got some movement there. Wind's blowing. Oh, 
All right, that is not necessarily a bad group. Let's go ahead and pull that uh, BCG out, see if there's something wrong with it. Something wrong with a BCG. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do some of the 62 grain 855s, see how they do. I hate that this thing's not cycling, but that's not something I'm worried about. I can fix that. And you can too. Here we go. 62 grain. Middle target. Woo! That's where I like it for it to hit. Lord. Okay, let's just say this thing does not like those 62 grains. Okay, no real rhyme or reason. Okay, so let's try out. These are the 77 grains of MagTech. Uh, I've always had really good luck with these guys, even though they're the more of the economical brand of the 77 grain family. <laughs> All right, we're going for the bottom target. Man, I wish this thing was cycling. I hate having to take my cheek weld off of here. A lot of movement between the upper and lower. we're gonna have to do is take this guy apart figure out what's wrong with it uh, these ga a gas problem is not hard to fix I mean it either functions or it doesn't function and I can tell you exactly what's wrong with it right now uh, the gas block is loose it is about an eighth uh, three sixteenths of an inch off of the face of the hub so the uh, most likely the uh, gas block screws are loose. And I'm gonna fix that problem right now, just to show you. Uh, we can do this while we're on screen. Actually, I could probably just do this right here. <laughs> and it, not, it gets, it knocks, literally went back into position. Yep. And just to show you that it did, I am going to show you something cool, uninterrupted. Un what happened, those gas block screws are not tight. I should have checked that when we took it apart, but it did not. Always check these things, guys. Uh, let's see, give me some cheap 193. Ah, here we go. And it, that's all it took. So what we can do is go ahead don't do this at home, by the way. But all we gotta do is tighten up the screw that's in there. And we got our trusty little Borka tool kit here, and I hope that maybe that's long enough. Oh shoot, we're missing a, I'm missing a hex head. It's probably sitting on my desk. This is easily fixed. Yep, right there. Now one, we'll check it for center, because it's gonna be centered on that slot. And that's how <laughs> that's how many turns it was loose. 
<laughs> no, I'm getting into it. So let's do this. Watch this. And that's how that works. Now, I want to do this while we got it running. I want to go back with my 77 grain. And I want to try working on that bottom target while I got one single cheek well. Bottom target. Here we go. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. So what will happen is it should be closer to target. I'm going to bring it left. There. Okay. Next I'm, I'm kind of happy about this because I have four of these exact barrels and I know that with the 77 grain it 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 will perform I don't know what rounds I guess we'll look at it on the video I'm gonna look at it later on but yeah okay so a couple things uh, Bear Creek Arsenal Check out your uh, specs and your milling for your M locks. Uh, let's make sure we got our screws tight, front, back, top, uh, and also the gas block screws. Uh, owners, when you get your Bear Creek Arsenal, three hundred eighty something dollars, I think this thing was, uh, with the seventy seven grain, and those are Magtech, nothing super special. You saw what that thing could do. Uh, I'm I I am impressed after we got it fixed. <laughs> so, and I'm really happy because that barrel, I've got four of them sitting at home or building those uppers uh, with the uh, pandemic build series. So this is it. All right, so guys, that's it. Uh, there is a discount code, CODABOY underscore three two. Okay, I'll put it down below. But yeah, man, as, uh, as one would say, Heck yeah. I might just go ahead and get me, you know what? I'm going to put another dot down there. Let's let this barrel cool off. I got a couple more of those mag techs. Let's see if we can uh, really pinpoint that uh, group and see how well we can do. Stand by. So I have right here, this is my, uh, I keep that box in my competition bag and it is for three gun competition. So I uh, just happen to have some more of the 77 grain with me. We got 10 rounds in here. We're gonna take a poke out there at that uh, right side target and see what we can do on that thing. Now that camera is danger close, danger close. Here we go, first round. off. There's a bug on my neck. Ah! Got ourselves a flyer.
You'll see that fly. Damn it. All right, that was a fly. I was trying to shoot. No, that was a staple. God bless it. I got flies on me here. No dirt. That was a staple. Hmm. Guys, I'm not displeased with that at all. I mean, I think it's safe to say that, uh, with the exception of a couple of them, we got a pretty damn good group. Yeah. So again, uh, 386 bucks delivered. Now, as far as the little malfunctions, we got those fixed pretty quickly, and I so showed you guys how to do that on screen. If it's a, if it's a failure to cycle, it's probably a gas problem. Check your gas block. Other than that, it could be the gas key or an extractor. But 77 grain, I could live with that all day long. All right, guys. Well, that's it, man. Uh, thanks to the guys over there at Bear Creek Arsenal for sending this thing out for testing. Thanks to uh, having a beautiful venue like we have here uh, at the uh, uh, Mifflin County Sportsman's Association. You guys are absolutely awesome. And uh, that's about it. We always end them like this. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. It's Cowboy 32. I am out. Man, I'm glad that worked out. You guys have no idea what it's like to test a, a firearm and it just not do what you want it to do. And then you feel like it's a failure. And you feel like it exhausts you. So that's it. Huh. <laughs>